Okay, in 2008, we had the opportunity to move uh, to this building, which is in my hometown of Burien. And uh, that was a big deal for me because I wanted to move our operation to my hometown, uh, be close to where I live, have my work where I live, and uh, uh, be able to be more a part of the community. And so uh, we had an opportunity at this building, which is, uh, is actually a professional uh, medical dental building. And uh, we were able to occupy the basement and renovate that and turn it into a really nice uh, office and some warehouse space. And then um, we also were able to take about 600 square feet upstairs uh, and turn that into what was HTU. So that, this is really where HTU was born. That's the Home Task University. And so we used that upstairs space for training and for meetings and for collaboration and that type of thing. And then that was uh, made it possible to provide some separation from the actual business operation that happened downstairs, uh, phones, support, uh, technology, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, this building was a really great location for us for the period of time that we were here. The idea of moving to my hometown was a big deal. Let me explain why. I mean, I really desire to be part of our community. I desire for our staff to be able to live in a small community, to be able to live near their work, and uh, to be able to engage with community. Uh, but it really brings me to a point in this history video where I want to highlight uh, one of the things that, that I made a conscious effort of in regards to shooting this video, that we wanted, I wanted to maintain a very kind of a business statistics, facts sort of approach. The omission, the big omission is people. Throughout the history of this business, there has been year after year after year, there have been people bringing their time and talents to this business, and oftentimes bringing talents and time that I didn't have or somebody else on staff didn't have and doing things that we could not otherwise accomplish. And so I would just say in terms of people, I just want to make a general statement of thanks for the many people that really helped Home Task get to where it is and um, helped it through especially these young years uh, as we were building the business. So uh, I mentioned uh, at the last location down at JBDG that we had a big change that happened in 2008 and I want to explain what that is and why we had to do it. And the big thing was is that when we first when we first moved to this building we were a single brand operation. It was Yellow Van Handyman. It, it was actually Home Task Handyman uh, because Yellow Van Handyman had not yet been conceived uh, I had thought of it before we moved here, but we had not formalized the decision to change our main brand's name from the trademark name of Home Task to something different. And the reason that I did that was really because I looked at the history of a company called Service Master. And uh, if you look at Service Master on the internet, they've got a bunch of different service brands, uh, but they're, they're, uh, they have very separate verticals in the way that they're built. The original Service Master brand is trademark Service Master, um, and it's 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 now called Service Master Clean. But most people outside of the insurance industry don't really know what Service Master does because the company name doesn't really say what it does. And I didn't want to have that kind of a problem with uh, our handyman division uh, because I was now thinking of multi brands and the Home Task Network and multiple brands that we don't even own. And I also didn't want other brands that we either owned or didn't own that were a part of Home Task to feel like the handyman service had some special uh, treatment or something like that because they had the same trade name. And so uh, for a number of reasons we also felt like Yellow Van Handyman was just a better name than Home Task Handyman and uh, it has a nice ring to it. Uh, when we designed the trademark of Yellow Van Handyman we were able to take a, a 50's style look and feel, kind of a retro look and the purpose for doing that was because back in the 50s and 60s it was kind of the leave it to beaver area when people trusted people and they trusted brands and we wanted to capture some of that trust in the Yellow Van Handyman brand and uh, I remember in the back parking lot of this uh, support center at that time bringing I don't know it was eight or ten of the Yellow Van Handyman vans together one weekend and we rebranded them all from we stripped off the Home Task Handyman graphics and we put on the Yellow Van Handyman. And I'll tell you that the franchise owners during that period of time were incredibly gracious uh, to be uh, considerate of me and my vision for where we are going, uh, combined with uh, my somewhat lack of ability to communicate fully because I don't see the whole picture. And uh, so uh, thanks a lot to those guys during that time and gals. It was uh, super helpful. 
So that's the big change that happened in 2008. And, and really the, the big vision was all wrapped around HTN, the HomeTask network, and the growth of HomeTask.com as a destination online to be able to get service done from multiple uh, brands and solutions and services outside of just uh, a handyman service. So the, some other notable things that happened at this location was uh, 2008, 2009, and 10, all were just years of really good growth for us and uh, lots of recognition. We were recognized by the Franchise Business Review as one of the top 50 emerging franchises in the entire country. We were also recognized by Entrepreneur Magazine on two separate occasions as uh, members of the top 500 franchises, period, which is a huge honor. And we were recognized by the SBA, the Small Business Administration, as uh, a Veteran Business of the Year. So I'm a veteran and, and uh, so we're a veteran owned business of the year. So it was just a, a, a really big honor and a big growth time during this period when we were at this location. One of the funny things that happened when we were here is uh, we, we were told early on, you know, like, boy, you need to get DSL or no, you need to get a T1 because T1s are uh, they don't uh, fail as often. If they go down, they get brought back up quickly, right? And we knew conductivity was king and we really wanted to be well connected. And so we were paying a ridiculous amount of money for this T1. And I'll tell you what happened one time, uh, w w which, you know, just the, the difference between T1 and uh, DSL and, and cable internet and all those kinds of things, are, it's all, we understand it a lot better now and it's a lot, a lot more easily understood now and all that sort of thing. But back then, you know, we just didn't know. T1 is a better uh, connection, supposed to have better conductivity, all this kind of stuff. Well, what happened to us was some thieves came by in the night down the street a couple blocks down and they stole like a section of the, I think it was 1200 pair telephone line. So it's a big telephone line like this big and they just, they just cut it and they ripped it out of the street. And so of course the T1 runs over those lines and we were down for four days and couldn't really do anything about it. And uh, so needless to say, uh, from that point forward, we had some redundancy with cable and uh, DSL and some other options so that you know we, we knew that we could always stay connected. So uh, this location, one of the most notable things that happened during the years that we were here is we started being a multi-brand operation. So. As many of you know, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer in 1999 and given a 5% chance of living. Um, in uh, 2009, I authored a book called 5% Chance, which talks about my story and the story that Nikki and I and our kids have walked through for many years now, uh, post that diagnosis. Uh, but as part of that, we started a brand called Fredgies, which is an organic produce delivery service. And really where Fredgies started was, is uh, we had a bunch of friends that wanted to get organic produce, as did we, uh, but we didn't particularly like the prices at the retail store, so we, we looked for other options for how we could beat that, so we started passing around an Excel spreadsheet of different produce, and, and uh, you know people would send that back into Nikki after they picked what they wanted, and then we'd place a big order from the warehouse, and then we'd bring it to our house and sort it all out, and we'd put some boxes on our front porch, and our friends would come up and write us a check and pick up their produce and really that was where Fredgy started from as, and uh, which is you know as we all know now a thriving uh, organic produce delivery service which really still has the same roots and the same mindset in terms of trying to help people get produce at a good value and help people have uh, healthy living foods to survive on and make it easy for them so we officially started that here uh, again that was another one of those things that kind of started out of our home uh, but then ended up more officially starting here with the franchise concept and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, the next big thing was is, is uh, when we acquired Pet Butler and uh, that was an existing brand that we had the opportunity to take over in uh, 2010. So August of 2010 we took that over and spent uh, the next six months just really going through a bunch of effort to, to get it stabilized and and, and basically build relationships with all the existing franchise owners. There's about 70 locations when we took it over. So that was a, obviously a big addition to our uh, suite of brands and services. The next big thing that we did here that was just huge for us was uh, being able to start Lawn Army. And we started that just before we moved to our other location uh, just down the street that's more in the downtown core of Burien. We'll talk more about Lawn Army and we'll show you that location next. 
Okay, we find ourselves at the final stop of this history video tour. This happens to be our current location and we are right on the downtown 152nd Street in Burien, Washington. So we moved about 10 blocks from our previous location to this location here. And this actually was a storefront, which was uh, a company called Jorstad Jewelers for about 50 years. And uh, we took over the space. There's about 6,000 square feet upstairs and downstairs uh, that we renovated for our use. And a lot of people have asked us, well, like, why did you take a retail space to make it a corporate office or a headquarters or anything like that? Um, this, of course, in our, our uh, vernacular is our support center. This is where all of our team works, and this is where we support all of our franchise owners, where we do training, where everything really happens for the company. And the big reason is, is that we can be part of our community, just like our franchise partners are part of their community in the different areas where they live and work and play and pray and um, do life. This allows us to be literally right on the sidewalk here in uh, downtown Burien, right in the heart of everything that's happening. We've built our, our uh, facility so that we have a very open, friendly uh, front end with a nice uh, modern kitchen and a training area and more of the office stuff towards the, towards the back. But uh, we're able to use the front for uh, gatherings and training and parties and events and different things to, uh, to do uh, with the community. So it allows us to be able to be engaged on a local level. So uh, additionally, this location uh, just from a geographical standpoint is literally five minutes from an international airport which makes it really easy for people flying in and wanting to be a part of uh, what we're doing and what's going on and um, so we're just really excited about being here and excited about this facility and and the amount that we'll be able to grow here uh, in the next few years so and that's really what we're poised for is growth uh, the last two or three years have been uh, slower business wise but um, uh, because of the economy and a lot of things going on there, but uh, we have seen some growth and we've actually launched new brands and, and uh, uh, done some new stuff. And so uh, we're really excited and encouraged about that. And we're excited and encouraged about uh, launching additional brands and opening up uh, additional brands within the uh, Home Task Network and our affiliate network. And one of the biggest things that we're really excited about right now is that, that's happened here since we've been here is we've signed our first affiliate brand onto the home task network and so what that means is that in addition to the brands that we own there's also uh, brands represented on home task that we don't own and so we're supporting and servicing and really starting to grow out from the center of that uh, HTN network to include other brands of service so the growth of the home task network is a really big deal to me because it's something that as you've learned through this history video that I envisioned quite a few years ago. And so to actually see all the technology come together and see the relationships that I've been able to build, build within the franchise community to bring other brands into the home task network and um, just to see all that come together and actually start to sign brands and see that happen is really exciting. In addition, you know, this year we've seen some of the best growth within our franchise locations and the unit level economics. Um, you know, obviously adding new franchises all the time, which is really encouraging. And so uh, this location is uh, encouraging and exciting to us from a business standpoint. Uh, we feel like we can grow to uh, maybe 300 to 400 franchises here, uh, possibly even beyond that. Uh, so, and we've got room for expansion in the community here. So uh, we just, we really like where we're at. We like the opportunities here and we look forward to being here for a good long time. So I want to thank you for watching this video, for taking the time to watch it, to learn more about Home Task, about our heart, about our vision, about our company and where we're going, about our people, about our resources, about uh, what it is that we're all about and uh, what it is that we're endeavoring to do. Uh, I thank you for using Home Task, which I'm sure just about everybody that's watching this has probably used one of the brands that's uh, represented in the Home Task network. I thank you for referring Home Task and our service brands uh, to other people. And I want to thank most of all those of you who are literally devoting uh, a period or a segment in your life to be part of this family, to be part of Home Task, either as a staff member or as a franchise partner in some other capacity. Uh, being a part of Home Task. So thank you for that. Thank you for watching this. And that is the Home Task history up to date.